back to Prime Time News. Special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. A reminder as well that you can watch TVJ live by downloading our OneSpot Media app in the Google Play Store or the App Store. That's the number one, followed by the words Spot and Media. Up first this evening, after 12 days, the government has indicated that it will extend the state of public emergency in St. James beyond the minimum requirement of 14 days. The indication came just days after Prime Minister Andrew Honus toured sections of the parish and declared some satisfaction with the operation so far. TVJ's Dash and Hendricks tells us more. It's almost two weeks now since the state of public emergency was declared in St. James. So far, some 450 people have been processed and released. 11 wanted men have been held. Weapons have been found, but not in the quantities one would expect with the security forces having extraordinary powers to search premises without a warrant. But come Tuesday, when Parliament sits, there is an indication that Prime Minister Andrew Holness will ask his parliamentary colleagues to vote on extending the state of emergency in St. James. The agenda for Tuesday as a sitting of the House of Representatives includes a resolution to extend the Emergency Powers Act. Prime Minister Andrew Holness will also make a statement to the House regarding the state of emergency. It was declared on January 18. The proclamation that declared it stated that the state of emergency, unless revoked, will remain in force for 14 days or for a period not exceeding three months as determined by a two-thirds majority of the House of Representatives. That comes as the TVJ News has learned that a major operation involving the security forces has been underway since Monday morning in northwestern St. Elizabeth and eastern Westmoreland in search of men who have escaped the state of emergency dragnet in St. James. According to reports, the men fled St. James through the hills. It is understood that the operation is in search of members of the Ratty Gang. The police and military are being supported from the air by helicopter. Since last week, operations have been ongoing in a number of communities on the border of St. James and St. Elizabeth. Elizabeth, TVJ News was informed that intelligence has led the joint security operation into two other communities where it is believed that members of the Rati Gang made their way after posing as market vendors. Dashan Hendricks, TVJ News. In the meantime, as the country awaits word on who will be in charge of the Jamaica Constabulary Force effective February 1, there is a call for the Police Service Commission, PSC, to be held to account in light of the sudden departure of Commissioner George Quaylo. Mr. Quaylo is to proceed on pre-retirement leave on Wednesday after nine months on the job. President of the Jamaica Chamber of Commerce, Lawrence Watson, had said there needs to be a major shake-up in the process used to select the police commissioner, with the focus being on the PSC. CEO of the private sector organization of Jamaica, Dennis Chung, says with the PSC having had the responsibility for selecting Mr. Quaylo, it has questions to answer. The fact is that any organization or any manager right, that um, employs someone and then in such a short period of time, you know, um, after confirming the person, they have to go back and, 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 and you know, what, what, you know, separate with the person, then they also have an accountability. They have an accountability to ensure that they go through the proper process, you know, an evaluation to ensure that they employ the right person for the position on a long-term basis. Students and staff at Bogwalk High School in St. Catherine gathered to remember 14-year-old John Reynolds who was killed on the weekend. Occasion helped with counseling support. More in this report. Drawings and letters were just some of the ways students expressed their feelings about the loss of one of their classmates who was killed over the weekend. 14-year-old John Reynolds was killed along with his father and stepmother. John Reynolds, his father, 35-year-old Shannon Reynolds, called Marlon, and his stepmother, known only as Tippy, were shot inside their house in Victoria Linstead Friday night. According to reports, about 11.35, residents saw the bullet-riddled bodies and called the police. On Monday, students and staff at the Bog Walk High School gathered to remember John Reynolds. Guidance counselor Serene Small said the students, particularly those from John's grade 8 class, are depressed. We are saddened about what happened and we are just trying to see how best we can help them to overcome this grief. It is a sad day when 
our students are condemned. The students have been destroyed. Um, they are crying. They are depressed. So I have, have dispatched several of my I have three guidance counselors. I've dispatched all the guidance counselors to interact with them. And um, the Ministry of Education, Region 6, has sent the guidance counseling unit led by Mr. Dalkey and social worker Ms. Tusi to really, really bring comfort, try to normalize the situation. Ms. Small says John was doing well in school and it is sad that he was killed at such a young age. She lamented that the crime situation had reached the gates of her school. It has reached many schools and a lot of time you have been hearing on the news of schools that are affected and you didn't have thought that it, it would have hit you know your school but it has and we're really trying to see how best we can cope with the situation and uh, help our students day by day it is really a sad situation when our children are, are, are being killed. Our children are the future of this country. Kalisha Williams, TVJ News. At least five persons would have to answer to breaches of the Toll Road Act when they appear in court next month. That as police investigations show that these persons have been using several strategies to avoid paying tolls. The police have revealed that collectively the accused have committed over 35 breaches. TVJ's Anthony Lug reports. We all hate paying tolls, but it's something we all do once we decide to use the toll roads. Well, almost everyone. That's because police investigations have revealed that persons have been using strategies to avoid paying to use the roads. What they do is that in some instances, as we would have seen, they, they tailgate very close behind large vehicles. And so as that bar goes up, they go through with the large vehicle. But pity do, they didn't realize that they are being captured. And as we speak, some five persons have been nabbed. Uh, they have a total of some 33 breaches that they have committed and they have breached section 26 of the Toll Road Act and they will be facing the court from early February. Though the issue isn't one that impacts revenue greatly, communications manager of Jamaica Infrastructure Operator JIO, Nicole Kuster, says she's concerned. But we are very concerned with the safety aspect that it represents to our users. It's a very dangerous practice and can result in damage to the vehicles and accidents that are largely avoidable if, if a persons just obey the rules of the, of the toll road. And when asked the plans that are in place to bring an end to the practice, Ms. Costa gave this response. So the police are working assiduously to apprehend the transgressors and to, to carry out their duties to the full extent of the law to make them understand that it is a practice that is punishable by law. SSP Calvin Allen also issued this warning. The clearest warning we are giving to persons is, you know, we want for you to be fair and honest as you use the roadway and the toll road act is really known none for you to, to fool around with as the fines are very steep. And so these five persons will be facing the court as it relates to this breach. Anthony Locke, TVJ News. Our top story this evening, we need more time. The against the Bustamati Hospital for Children five years after she says the doctors misdiagnosed her newborn son. She told TVJ News that her son's eye was removed after doctors at the facility told her he had cancer. TVJ's Kalisha Williams has that story. Flashback to 2013, Tiffany Hallwood welcomed her second child, Marlando Clark, a bouncing baby boy, full of life, healthy, or so his mother thought. According to Ms. Hallwood, that moment was short-lived. I was playing with Marlando one night. When I pulled him up to the lights, I noticed his iris wasn't, it, was, it didn't open, it opened, so... I went to his grandmother and his auntie and I showed them, I asked them what they thought it was. 
She told TVJ News that weeks later she took her son for routine checks at her regular health clinic and told the doctor about her concern. After which she was referred to the Bustamante Hospital for Children. I did that and when the doctor saw him, he said that it was cancer in the eye, which is called retinoblastoma. She says it all came crashing down. The very thought of her son having cancer left a hole in her heart. But her mother, desperate to save her son's life, had to make a tough decision. It was to remove the defective eye or risk seeing him suffer from a terminal illness. According to Ms. Hallwood, March 8, 2013 is a day she will not soon forget. Her son's eye was successfully removed, but again, the doctor had more sad news. He said to me, Mommy, I don't want you to feel any way about taking out a baby's eye, but it is not can. I asked him what it was. He did not give me a definite name. It's a situation her lawyer, Oray Nelson, believes could have been prevented. Having read the record, I came away with the opinion that there were tests that could be other tests that could be done to determine whether or not the reason given to do the surgery was a, an accurate one. But why take action now? She pointed out that her child's health has been made worse. He started having seizures months after the surgery, which is affecting him at school. And yet, she says, no help from the hospital. Apart from the prosthetic eye, it donated to the child some years ago. I just want the hospital to stand the responsibility of his eye, whatever he needs. When we contacted the East Regional Health Authority, the body with responsibility for the Bustamante Hospital children, we were advised that the matter is a legal issue, therefore the hospital is unable to comment. Kelisha Williams, TVJ News. Another man who was injured in the shooting at a bar in the Hermitage community in Augustown, St. Andrew, on a Friday night has died. He has been identified as Jason Waller. The police have also revealed what preliminary investigations have uncovered about the Hermitage killings. Details from TVJ's Kirk Wright. The police say so far their investigation shows the killing at Hermitage in August Town on Friday night aren't gang related. Based on our investigation, at least the motive seems to be a robbery. However, we are still doing further investigations into the matter. Another meeting was held in August Town on Monday to discuss solutions to ending the violence. The meeting was poorly attended, mainly police personnel, but a few residents also turned. Council for the Papine Division in which August Town falls, Venetia Phillips, says the poor turnout speaks to the level of fear among the people and the fact many are still not ready to do what's needed to bring peace. She lashed in the meeting saying that needs to stop. We have seen too many of you. Kirk Wright, TVG News. 
In a primetime news follow-up on our poverty series, TVJ News visited the home where five St. Thomas children taken from their paternal grandmother are now staying. The move followed last Friday's court order for the children to be taken from the St. Thomas grandmother after seeing the poor conditions under which they lived. TVJ Shamela Mitchell reports. Feet clean at a spacious room with a bed to sleep, a kitchen with a fridge full of food. It's Sunday morning in Friendship Pen, and already Sunday dinner is in full swing for the five children taken away from the St. Thomas woman, Matilda Edmondson. The conditions at her home were not suitable for the children to live in. So, a judge ordered the children to be temporarily removed and placed at their maternal grandparents' home. Right now, them are right. Walter Rowe is the grandfather of the five children. Mr. Rowe lives just a stone's throw away from Miss Edmondson. Since this show was aired on TVJ's primetime news two weeks ago, many have wondered about the other side of the children's family. Where is the children's mother in all of this? According to Mr. Rowe, his daughter has gotten herself in trouble with the law. However, he did not wish to comment further on that either, only to say... The mother, she had a dear. Many have asked why the other grandparents did not take the children in the first place since they have the means to do so. Again, Mr. Rowe declined to comment on that. However, he did not know how bad the situation was until the story was aired on TPJ News. Well, uh, I did saw it on the television. All the children, they missed bad and things like that. And I go for them. I take this house here. This house here is for, for them. The children not returned to Miss Edmondson since the other grandparents took the children a week after the store was carried. It's not me take them to court, you know. Is the lady who did have them take me to the court to get back with get the child them. Meanwhile, Mr. Rowe said the children will be going to school. He also said that he and his wife will be seeking to get full custody of the children. Shamala Mitchell, TVG News. For a little over a week, residents in the Mount Pleasant area of West Portland have been able to drive in and out of their communities as floodwaters have been diverted from the Matty Hole area. Though they are grateful for the assistance, there are fresh concerns about flooding in nearby communities since the water has been directed to the Rio Grande. TVJ's Andrea Chisholm has his primetime news follow-up. Oh, a return to normalcy. After days of travel raft and by bush due to flooding at Matihole, only rem the ordeal which left scores of people marooned. Residents of Medstone and Bourbon can now drive, ride, and walk in style to and from their communities. A newly built farm road gives farmers access to their crops, and pipes have also been installed to channel the water if there is heavy rain. But some residents have a concern. Those pipes now, not ready. No big enough. Because yeah. the volume of water we have come through that one, like a two-foot pipe, 24-inch pipe can carry that. You want some pipe where big like them, like them big black tank. Concerns too about the water being channeled to the Rio Grande, and one resident made this prediction about a nearby town. St. Mark's will be a go flood in its 20 or in its 15 year when water will rise again. St. Mark's will be a look out because the water is coming for them. Another reason cave holes. The research on water, a lot of cave holes. All of them places when they're looking at is more cave holes. So if you keep them down dry, Matthew will not going to go down. And that is the point where they don't know about this Matthew. They have a cave over there where they call Chocho Walk. When that cave full, one in the Jolly Walk right here, so when that full, the whole of the cave, them answer them murder. They have the main one down on place where they call Cuba. When Cuba, when Cuba suck the water, it spit it out back up here, so. so it, it hard to solve. For now, though... Happy, happy, happy. Can't happy off. It's all smiles for Primrose Grey. Her shop, which was once empty, is now chock full of items for customers. And some of her chickens, which were on the brink of starvation, now have food in abundance. Residents credit their member of parliament, Darl Vaz, the private engineers, the National Works Agency, and other stakeholders for plugging the hole in their lives caused by flooding at Matty Hole. Andrea Chisholm, TVJ News. In this week's edition of A Ray of Hope, the Walker's Place of Safety gets financial assistance. A Ray of Hope.
Hope is brought to 